I'm the main character. The hero of this game is me. I've gone through VR training of the tanker mission before. Yeah? Well, I doubt it accurately simulates the events of that mission. This is Karen Hojo reporting from Ellis Island. The effects of last night's incident are apparent even here. The Statue of Liberty made the long trip from France to Liberty Island in 1886 as a birthday present, if you will, on the centennial of our independence. She now stands in front of the Immigration Museum. Seasick, Snake? I don't get sea... Oh, well. It'll be better once you're off the deck. You could also try taking some pentazamine. <laughs> pentazamine doesn't work for seasickness. At least Naomi didn't say any... <laughs> Trust me. And it's not like you have anything to lose. Otacon, I took the pentazamine and you're right. The seasickness is gone. Wow, really? What do you mean, really? You said... Drugs are mostly about placebo effect. If you believe it's effective, it is. You're more naive than I thought. They probably want to keep a record of this exercise, and maybe give a little presentation. Presentation? That ship's been transmitting a live video feed via military satellite uplink for a while now. So there's some brass out there smacking their lips over this little home movie. I've been trying to pinpoint the receiving location, but I haven't had much luck. There's a heavy-duty firewall in the way. I'll try some more, though. Wherever it is, it must be a warm, dry office with hot coffee on tap. Far cry from that tanker, huh? That's what happens when the battlefield has a revolution in military affairs. The reason the ship's drive section is in the aft area is so that more oil tanks can be fitted into the middle part. A shortened propeller axle is another benefit. The simplification of the drive structure means a greater emphasis can be placed on hull strength. Ocelot sold the Metal Gear specs to anyone with hard cash after he survived Shadow Moses. And raked in enough money to buy a decent-sized country in the process. But was that... was money really Ocelot's end objective? You think he had a deeper plan? I do. Nothing definite, but acquiring a large sum of money is always a good starting point for another project. Hmm. Anyway, every country that paid off Ocelot is racing to produce its own bipedal tank, one that can launch the so-called invisible nuclear warhead. If the whole world has a Metal Gear, the military dominance of the U.S. will disappear. In a world where Metal Gear has become commonplace, the only way to regain the upper hand is to possess a weapon even more powerful than Metal Gear. And that means a new Metal Gear. Exactly. The arms race must go on. The metal gear that the tanker is transporting is being developed under Marine Corps jurisdiction. But I've also heard a rumor that the Navy is working on its own metal gear. Any more info on the Navy's model? I tried to hack some out, but security was too tight. There's a lot of money being allocated, that's for sure. But every one of my investigations takes me to one name, then hits a brick wall. The name is The Patriots. Who are they? I wish I knew. I have no idea if this is an individual or an organization, even. But once we expose the presence of this Marine Corps Metal Gear to the world, maybe that will shake the Patriots out of the tree. This mission is partly about that, too. So that's the KA-60 Kasatka, a multi-purpose military helicopter built by Kamov, the Russian aerospace firm. It adapts to a variety of missions. Troop and weapons transport, medevac, target marking for attack choppers, even all-weather surveillance missions. It uses Fenestron-type tail rotors. That's what makes the distinct rotor sound that you picked up. It is a Russian helicopter, but we can't be sure that the hijackers are Russian military. After all, Kamov did make a civilian version, the KA-62. And there's also the KA-64, the export model. Who is she, anyway? That scout knife had Spetsnaz written all over it, but... Spetsnaz? That's the special ops of the Soviet GRU. So she must be Russian? Who knows? All I'm sure of is that she shoots like a commando. Be careful! Didn't think Gerlukovich was involved, of all people. Ocelot's former CO, and a man with a private army of ex-Russian military and GRU soldiers. I don't like it. And Liquid was planning to team up with that bunch at Shadow Moses. All he managed to do back then was to provide a toy or two. Looks like he's had enough of sponsoring insurrections. So this time he's out here himself. I guess he's after Metal Gear? History repeats itself.
Metal Gear has enough strategic clout to upset the balance of military power overnight. He must be dreaming of Mother Russia's return to glory. Like you said, history repeats itself. Some people never change. Maybe it's the world that doesn't or won't change. Maybe. But we're fighting to upset the status quo too, aren't we? So who was that Olga person? Don't know. I'm guessing she's Gerlukovich's daughter. She said nomads. Didn't she, you know, look a little like Meryl? I didn't notice. Snake, I owe you an apology. The reason I didn't mention my sister was, well, because... Otacon, have I ever told you who gave me this bandana? No, but what's that got to do with this? It means you don't have to explain. Okay, thanks, Snake. The Marine Corps' defining character is that of an emergency response team in crisis situations. But the Army's been steadily enlarging its own crisis response capabilities, building on the strength of their medium brigade. Analysis is that the Marine Corps sees this as an infringement on their own domain and is more than a little alarmed. We both know that Metal Gear Rex was being developed for deployment by the Army, so it does make sense that the Marines are trying to compete with their own version of Metal Gear. So the Commandant says the Navy is leaning on them, huh? I'm sure the Navy isn't happy about the new Metal Gear prototype being developed. From what I can tell, the new model can make an approach, launch an attack, and execute takeoffs from the ocean without any support. If the weapon makes it past the testing stage, it could render aircraft carriers, battleships, even submarines obsolete. It's a matter of life or death for the Navy as an organization. You heard the Commandant mention the NMD, the National Missile Defense Program. It was conceptualized late last century as a defense network to detect and engage enemy ICBMs launched at the continental United States. But at the same time, it came under fire for contributing to nuclear proliferation. The merving of ballistic missiles and the increase in weapon lethality were some of the byproducts of these defense R&Ds. There was a lot of opposition from the international community on the grounds that the program violated the anti-ballistic missile treaty. Russia and China were especially vocal in their criticism. Program deployment is a ways off in any case. The military hasn't been able to come up with a good technology to discriminate between actual targets and decoys. There are also other tech issues that have to be addressed. Snake, once you get close enough for close quarters combat, forget the weapons. Push the punch button to take a swing. Punching is an effective, noiseless way to take out enemies. Hit the punch button repeatedly to unleash combo attacks and pummel the enemy. You can also use the first person view. Of course, the biggest favor you can do yourself is to avoid getting in melee situations altogether. Hey, you have a chaff grenade. You can use that to interfere with enemy radio communications and electronic devices for a short time. The chaff grenade is a weapon that disperses aluminum foil or metal-coated glass and plastic fibers to confuse the enemy radar. What you have is a portable application of the chaff launchers built into fighter planes. When detonated, the grenade releases tiny chaff pieces as well as miniaturized active jammers using a small amount of explosives. The grenade can't create full-scale chaff corridors or chaff clouds, but will form a radar cross-section area large enough for single personnel use. This weapon is for electronic interference only, though. It has no effect on enemy personnel. Okay, take out the digital camera. I want you to take a picture of the new Metal Gear. But don't forget... To save the pictures, you need a memory card PS2. When you take pictures, don't forget to insert the memory card PS2 into the memory card slot. You know, the camera has been an essential part of warfare for a while now. I heard that the photo core of the U.S. Army has been around for a hundred years. Snake, the equipment you've got there is a pair of earplugs. You usually have reduced hearing for a while after setting off a stun grenade, but not if you have those on. But you won't hear too well as long as you have them on either. Use them only with stun grenades. You're using the anti-personnel sensor, I see. It measures the electromagnetic fields and heartbeat of life forms and converts the data into vibrations. If an enemy draws near, it will vibrate. The stronger the vibration, the closer the enemy is. But remember, when using the anti-personnel sensor, you'll only be able to feel the vibrations coming from the sensor. Snake, there wasn't enough space left on the memory card PS2. I couldn't save the game. Okay, there's a saying that goes, even a bird on high dies a glutton's death, as do the fish of the deeps. The lesson is, uh, don't be greedy.
The fish that belonged to a family called the Deeps died from overfeeding, and so did a bird that got high on something, probably fermented fruit. Okay, if you say so. I do, Snake. Don't take unnecessary risks just because you're greedy for more items. Remember the Deep family's fish. <sighs> Another Chinese proverb. Those who look to the heavens prosper. Those who defy it are no more. Do you know this one? The meaning here is... Hold on a sec. That you can only survive as long as you're a part of the natural order of things. You remember pre-ripped jeans? Manufacturers thought that just because people loved old, broken-in jeans, they would want to buy new jeans that looked old. So they purposefully... What do jeans have to do with nature and order? Denim should fray and rip on its own, naturally, right? Some designers tried to go against that, and no one bought them. The earnings report from that fiscal year is enough of a proof. Earnings? This is my favorite Chinese saying. Better to be first among roosters than last among bulls. Of course, the meaning's clear. If you have to choose between being a chicken or a cow, pick the chicken. Cows are always being messed with by aliens. Cattle mutilations are up, you know. Why go looking for trouble, right? If an enemy spots you, you'll be in more trouble than a cow on a UFO. You stay out of their sight. Why would aliens be in an old Chinese proverb? Everyone knows they've been visiting us for thousands of years. News to me. Snake, do you know the Chinese proverb, care avoids air? Air is thought to be a kung word, meaning what? There are some linguists who think that this accounts for an almost universal utterance of the syllable er when people are at a loss for words. A kind of vestigial... Hey! Ah! What a crock! What did you do with that little cheat sheet I made you? Er... Oh, there it is! <gasps> hey! Er... That's really, uh... How could you do that? You know how busy I am and you... It's not what you think. Oh? So what am I thinking? What's going on over there? Oh, hi, Snake. Do you know the Otacon's been... Er, uh, Mei Ling, we're in the middle of a mission and everything, so can we, you know... Hmm. Fine. Sure. And, Snake, the real meaning of care avoids air is that if you're cautious, you can avoid making serious mistakes. Even if you've gotten used to the mission, watch what you do. Good luck. Yeah, Snake. Good luck. You? I'm not done with. Yeah. <laughs> Let's discuss this, shall we? Uh, what happened to Mei Ling? He... she got mad and went offline. What did you do? Nothing. Now, don't we need to get back to the mission? So much to do, so little time. <sighs> oh, so that was another rehearsal for this mission. No, a simulation. Not the same thing as a rehearsal. Leverage the experience from your VR training, Raiden. A perfectly real VR experience is in itself an accomplished result. Have confidence in your abilities. Jack, do you remember the day we met? I'm kind of busy right now, Rose. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. I do remember. It was right after I transferred to New York. There are all these tourists around you in front of the Federal Hall. A group of middle-aged Japanese ladies came up and asked me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building, and then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. <laughs> we started arguing, and I forgot all about the tourists. I was insisting that I was right, and you were doing the same. The next thing we knew, the Japanese women had gone away, and we ended up going to the Skyscraper Museum to see who had the better recall. We argued all the way to Battery Park. And for nothing. Since the museum was closed, we went our separate ways from the museum. And then I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence that we were actually working at the same place. That night we went up to the top of the Empire State. It was so beautiful. I could look down on the Chrysler building from 120 stories above ground. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning. Hmm. If it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't be together. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm taking up your time again. What? Take care. You're pretty fast. Well, not bad for a beginner, anyway. Hmm. Looks like VR training does come in handy. Stillman.
Tell me something about Fat Man. Well, to start, he was born the son of a clockmaker, neglected by his parents and without friends. It seems that he spent a lot of time by himself in his father's workshop. Maybe that was the reason, I'm not sure, but apparently he has had a tremendous fascination with clock mechanics since he was a child. It was at the age of ten that a guidebook that he found on the internet changed his life forever. That guidebook served as a basis of his eventually piecing together an atomic bomb. It was from there that he came to be known as Fat Man. And soon enough, there was no one associated with bombs that didn't know his name. In a sense, Fat Man was a hero. Although what he did was recognized only by those in the trade, I'm sure that it served to greatly stir the ego of the teenage boy at the center of it all. But he leaves his mark nowhere else. Apparently, he was hated and shunned by everyone in school. So he went on to focus all his energy on explosives. He scorned the reality that surrounded him and instead chose to embrace a world that would easily grant him recognition. Well, to be sure, it never amounted to anything more than, say, occasionally bringing a gun into school. Eventually, Fat Man came to Indian Head, the exercise training facilities of the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal at which I was a lecturer. He absorbed all kinds of knowledge, as if he hungered for bombs. Close to 20% of the students at Indian Head flunk out of what is truly a hellish curriculum. Despite this environment, he achieved extraordinarily high marks that were without precedent. After leaving Indian Head, he joined up with Nest, said to be the most accomplished bomb disposal unit. It was there that he apparently got into some trouble. What exactly? You got me, but Fat Man was definitely not cut out for group operations from the very start. Having been ousted from Nest, he was picked up by Dead Cell which was already becoming notorious for being a motley crew of sorts. It seems that it was through surprise attack maneuvers later conducted by Dead Cell that Fat Man completely subdued his former companions from Nest. While being the most peculiar individual among my students, he was also the most talented. Be sure not to underestimate him. Are we clear? That's not all. At the time, I was known as the top bomb disposal technician in the United States. Now, to someone like me, who had neither a wife nor children. That reputation was everything. I didn't want to lose it. That's why I lied about losing my leg, ran away from the responsibility that was mine, closed my eyes to the victims, stirred up the sympathy of the public. All right, Stillman, that's enough. For now, let's just worry about what we're going to do about Fat Man's bombs. Yeah. Good morning, Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin. Did you sleep well? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm good. Feeling much better. Pliskin, I saw someone wearing a cardboard box just now. A box? I don't know anything about that. You sure you weren't imagining things? Of course I'm sure. Do you think it's one of the members of Dead Cell? How should I know? I don't want to fight someone like that. Why not? Because it looks so dumb. Anyone who's willing to be seen like that must be completely insane. I mean, he's a psycho. There's no question about it. Huh. Uh, yeah. So Iroquois Pliskin was an alias. Of course. And the rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade? Made it up. That's just great. Anyway, I get the Pliskin part, but what about Iroquois? Iroquois is a Francified version of the Algonquin word for rattlesnakes. It's what they called their enemies. Algonquin? The Algonquin Nation, one of the many groups of Native Americans who used to call Manhattan Island their home. The majority of tribes in what's now the state of New York were a part of the Algonquin Nation. So this was a stronghold of snakes. By the way, Manhattan means Island of Hills in Algonquin. Arsenal's launch has initiated a security lockout. Otacons managed to override anything that leads to the computing room. This is no time to get sidetracked. Hurry! That's right. The life reaction tank cleanses polluted water with microorganisms. These organisms are activated by pumping them with large volumes of oxygen. As a result, the water's specific gravity is extremely light, making it impossible to remain afloat. Once you fall in, you'll never come up. Dead Cell was a shadow unit within the SEALs organization. Right. They handled surprise raids on vital government facilities, didn't they? Yes. They were originally put together to check the nation's military security system. The unit was the brainchild of ex-president George Sears. Dead Cell was a secret unit positioned at the opposite end of anti-terrorist outfits such as Delta Force and SEALs. She's the widow of Dead Cell's former beloved leader, 
I'd heard that she was welcomed with open arms by Vamp, who was the temporary leader at the time. For Vamp, it also meant welcoming the daughter of his former lover. Vamp and Fortune's mother? No, Vamp and Fortune's father. Vamp's bisexual. Oh, wait a sec. I thought Vamp and Fortune... You noticed, eh? Uh, yeah. As the President mentioned, Metal Gear Ray was created as an anti-Metal Gear weapon. In the Shadow Moses incident, Ocelot returned with a disc containing data of the exercises that were held for Metal Gear Rex and the new nuclear warhead. What's more, he sold that data not only to the nuclear powers, but to other countries as well. Those nations that obtained the data have commenced their own Metal Gear research. Where does it go from here? What happens when the world is flooded with variations of Metal Gear? We'll probably be looking at an era similar to that of the nuclear arms race. That was one of the reasons we organized philanthropy. I understand that Fortune's father, Marine Commandant Scott Dolph, had the same misgivings. That's why he proceeded with the development of the anti-Metal Gear weapon, Metal Gear Ray. In fact, Ray alone can drastically redefine tactics when you consider its seafaring capacity to approach, strike, and break off from targets. I also believe that Ray was a solution for renewing interest in the Marines, whose role as a rapid response force has dwindled over the last few years. That underwater mine is believed to have built-in compound sensors for detecting acceleration speed, changes in water pressure, body temperature, and other data. A light touch will trigger one of these, so be careful. You can't move once his knife nails your shadow. Shadow binding? Are we talking about some kind of ninjutsu? I don't think so. It's probably some form of hypnotism. Hypnotism? I'm guessing it's the power of suggestion, augmented by his speech and movements, coupled with the manipulation of the light reflecting off the blade of his knife. What should I do? I can't think of any way to break his spell on such a short notice. The easiest thing to do is to make sure his knife doesn't hit your shadow. E.E., -E, is that you? Yes. What do you want? Why did you get involved in weapons development? A lot of people will get hurt. Even more will die. I'm talking about the destruction of homes and cities. Radioactive contamination for years to come? You, of all people, should know the horror of nuclear weapons. You know about our family's dark history. Why, E.E., -E, why? You left me. You made my life a living hell. I didn't have a choice. Don't lie to me. The pool... You could never look me in the eye after the accident. You took the easy way out so you wouldn't have to face me. That way you could avoid responsibility every day. You ran. You ran away so you wouldn't have to face the pain. No, that's not why I left. You left me and took the easy way out. That's not true. I left the house because... You're a criminal, just like me. A criminal? I know what you did. You manipulated our account on the network. But look at what you're doing now. You're nothing but a cracker. No, I'm just applying my knowledge for the cause. The cause? What cause? Justice? For peace, E.E. E. I'm not like Snake. I, I can't carry a gun and face the enemy. That's why I do what I do best. Oh, right. Nice justification, Hal. Forget about being a criminal. You'd make a great lawyer. All right already. That's enough. Right. Now what do you want? Hal's wrong. Science doesn't exist to benefit the world. Uh, then what is it for? Science is for the individual. For me, it's a way to realize my dreams. That sounds pretty greedy. You can't realize your dreams without greed. And what's your dream? Take revenge on Hal. To beat him in his own game. Revenge? I am gonna make him regret the day he left me. I am gonna make him realize he was wrong. Of all the idiotic... I think that's enough. Idiotic? It's my goal, my reason for being alive. Hal is wrong. He's only being used by his country. He's pitiful. Even you guys are using him. Me? I'm using science to achieve my own dream. Real bright, lady. That's exactly the line that scientists are never meant to cross. Right. I sold my soul for revenge. I will never forgive him. I'll pretend this conversation never happened. No. You tell my brother exactly what I said. You... Emma! What? You're speaking your mind, not your heart. <sighs> Just leave it at that. Uh, okay. The Harrier II is an upgraded version of the world's first practical V-stall fighter plane. By shifting the propulsion of the engine nozzles on the sides, the plane can handle short-distance vertical takeoffs and landings. 
The payload capacity of the Harrier II is considerably larger than its predecessor due to improved engine output. As a result, it carries more armament, starting with a 25mm machine gun pod on the fuselage pylon. There are air-to-surface rockets on both wings and various pods for air-to-air -air missiles and cluster bombs. You won't be able to take out one of these with small arms fire. The fact is, you'll need to use Stinger missiles. Raiden, watch out for the Harrier's cluster bombs. Cluster bombs are non-guided units packed with a couple hundred bomblets for wide-range attacks. The bombs are equipped with timed fuses for detonation following release. The dispenser explodes, spreading the bomblets across a wide area. The Harrier II's fuselage pylons are equipped with 25mm machine gun pods. With a firing speed of 3,800 rounds per minute, rounds are launched at an initial velocity of over 1,000 meters per second. In other words, don't get shot. Emma, looks like you've recovered some of your life. Yeah, I got the munchies, so I had a little snack. Hmm. What? What do you have against snacking? Treats are psychologically healthy. Even my therapist says they're an effective stress relief measure. Besides, I have a high metabolism. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. I did gain a little weight lately, but, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Completely. And why is weight gain even considered a bad thing by society at large anyway? I mean, does it make life harder for everyone? I don't think so. Does it kill dolphins or, or make your favorite baseball team suck? But what's really, really troubling is this willingness to judge a woman's worth solely on how well she meets unrealistic standards of physical beauty. Look, Emma, I didn't even say anything. Oh. Well. <clears throat> Colonel, I remember this place. Of course you do. This is level one from the VR missions. Raiden, if you need to get past the biometric security system, you need to bring one of the enemies to the retinal scanner. I feel like I know this terrain. Wasn't it in the VR training? Nikita weapon mode, level four. Do you recognize it? Raiden, we're in trouble. Look at what's on TV. Raiden, take Solidus down. Think about Olga's child and your Rosemary. You must win. Raiden, you won't be able to use any of the enemy's equipment. Why not? You should know that all active weapons are equipped with a personal identification system. The owner enters their required user ID information during the weapon registration or at the start of a mission. If anyone other than the registered user tries to fire the weapon, the ID system will not authorize the action. But these are black market Russian weapons. How can they be equipped with identification functionality? They must have been customized by the terrorists themselves. These are professionals we're dealing with, and they certainly won't let their own equipment be used against them. I'm guessing it's the same for the Navy SEALs gear? Right. How am I supposed to procure weapons then? Find the ones that haven't yet been individualized. Everything you find in the item box is clean. You should know this from your VR training. Raiden, over there is the submarine for deep sea dives. It is apparently used in repairing submerged areas of the big shell and for studying deep-sea ecosystems and changes in water quality. It can dive to depths of around 500 meters at a maximum speed of roughly three knots. In addition to its normal water-resistant lighting, it is also outfitted with lighting resistant to muddy water. I doubt that you'll get it to work, though. Nodes are the terminals of the Operation Support Computer Network for the Big Shell. Of course, only Big Shell staff can gain access with their job description determining their system authority and access. I installed a program in your nanomachines that automatically enters the passcode for unrestricted access. Press the action button in front of the node to activate it. Use the node by pressing the action button in front of the terminal. You have experience combating Foxhound during VR training, right? You'll be fine. Don't be apprehensive. Raiden, don't dwell on what Pliskin said. The VR training you underwent is the best training program there is. There is no reason to be apprehensive. Be confident. Do you understand? Fatman is wearing a bomb blast suit. It is worn when disarming explosives and protects its wearer from the blast, heat, and shards. Essentially, it resembles a bulletproof vest made out of special material. The front of the head and body are guarded by a laminated ballistic insert. The back, too, is guarded with a protector to ease the impact on the spine from a fall after a blast. Attacks to his torso will likely have little effect. At first, it might look to be cumbersome, but in fact, it is made to be extremely flexible so as not to hinder bomb disposal. One could even do apparatus gymnastics, like the pommel horse or parallel bars in it. 
The problem is that it is poorly ventilated, and having it on for long periods of time runs the risk of leaving its wearer mildly overheated. However, the suit is equipped with a cooling system like a spacesuit in which the coolant is run through inner suit tubes. He will not likely overheat in the suit. With those configurations, however, the total weight of the suit should exceed 50 kilograms. That's too heavy for skating around. An impact might easily make him lose his balance and he'll fall down. Communicator Entertainment Program, Idea Spy 2.5, Episode 1. New York, here in the city where dreams come true and desires rule, something is being bought, sold, and thrown away, even as we speak. But behind the scenes of business as usual, the nefarious J.E. Corporation lines its already bloated coffers with profits from worthless products. As J.E. swindles yet another innocent into purchasing high-priced junk, the FBI mobilizes a top-secret task force to put a stop to the menace. Now, the city's best-kept secret spy is out there, briefed and ready to protect the people from J.E., the catalog of conspiracy. Just call him 2.5. I see you have the M4 equipped. It's a standard-issue assault carbine for SOCOM troops. Like the M16A2, it uses 5.56mm cartridges and can hold 30 per magazine. It features a flat-top upper receiver and a detachable carrying handle, and it can be configured to the specifications of the Special Forces. What's the matter? Is that the best VR kids can do? The PSG-1 is an anti-terrorist automated sniper rifle. It features roller-locked action which allows a full, free-floating barrel. The end result is an automatic rifle with precision equal to that of a bolt-action sniper rifle. The rifle has a five-round group capacity of 50 millimeters at a range of approximately 270 meters. In my opinion, the PSG-1 is one of the finest sniper rifles in the world. Although you've probably fired a few rounds in VR training, there are a few differences in handling the rifle you should be aware of. First, that the PSG-1 is equipped with a special magnification adjustable scope. For precision shooting, it allows you to zoom in on your target. And for wide range viewing, all you have to do is zoom out. Another difference is that you aren't limited to firing from the prone position. In short, you can fire from a crouching or standing position. However, the less stable your position, the tougher it is to hold your aim steady. For accuracy, the best thing to do is crawl up to your target and fire from a prone position. The suppressor uses multiple partitions to reduce gas discharge and keep sound and muzzle fire to a minimum. By keeping the internal baffles moist, sound can be reduced by approximately 38 decibels. That suppressor can be screwed and secured to 10 different positions. This function allows you to adjust the gun's impact point, but that doesn't really matter. That's because the suppressor's already been adjusted. You should be able to get the same results you got when you didn't have a suppressor attached. This'll reduce your chances of discovery, as long as you don't leave too many bodies around. Your ammo is also limited, so don't go shooting everything in sight. That mine detector that you're equipped with displays the location of Claymore mines that aren't visible to the naked eye. It's not your run-of-the-mill mine detector. It's the latest model to use the technology developed in a private Mu chem lab. It isn't a metal detector. It's based more on the various systems used in chemical detectors. In short, it doesn't respond to a mine's metallic casing. It actually detects the elements used in explosives. Basically, it's similar to the sensor that the old man gave you. The one that responds to the smell of C4. That's why you can accurately detect the location of mines, despite the fact that you're in a metal-based structure. Those night vision goggles will let you see in the dark. The goggles are equipped with an image intensifier that amplifies even the lowest levels of light to produce clear images. Night vision devices were introduced in the 1940s. Since then, they've undergone several modifications to improve both sensitivity and resolution. Incidentally, the set you're using is a fourth-generation model. Those thermal goggles provide night vision by creating images from heat distribution. The goggles have a resolution of over 400,000 pixels, and their equivalent noise thermal differential is under 0.05 degrees Celsius. This performance is largely attributed to the use of a two-dimensional solid projection system with outstanding electric charge transfer capability. With these goggles, you can probably see Claymore mines that are rendered invisible with stealth camouflage. You've got rations. Rations are military food provisions capable of life recovery. Select a ration in the menu display and press the confirmation button for life recovery. 
If you equip yourself with rations, you can automatically recover life the moment it hits zero. Field rations are not just emergency food. For a soldier, it's a vital factor in maintaining combat efficiency. Rations are the result of concentrated research and development efforts on the part of the U.S. military's cooking laboratory. Together with calories, meticulous attention is focused on balanced nutrition. Freeze-dried, the rations are easy to carry and keep well. It ain't home cooking, but it'll satisfy your nutritional needs. Hmm. What's on your mind? Well, just between you and me. Sure. What is it? I prefer rations over Rose's home cooking. Hmm. That bad, huh? I see you're wearing body armor. That's a great way to minimize damage. Your body armor is interwoven with a special fiber made from high-performance polymer materials. The special fiber tangles around a bullet to cushion and spread out the impact to keep damage at a minimum. Bear in mind that the armor just reduces damage. It doesn't eliminate it. The SOCOM I gave you has a double-action trigger mechanism. For tactical reasons, the gun's been engineered to cock and lock, a feature allowing the safety to be locked with the trigger cocked. Hostage rescue operations require precision shooting and response in millisecond terms. Rescue team members did not think highly of the first round double action with a switch over to single action in the following rounds. Their solution was to cock and lock. With the trigger cocked and the safety locked, the first round could be fired relatively faster. Aside from the time-saving nature of this feature, it is also of vital importance when combat shooting is the foremost consideration. By making the first round a single action shot, subsequent pulls of the trigger can be conducted in the same manner. In short, Cock and lock allows for smoother and more rapid firing. The reinforcements that rush up whenever you're discovered by the enemy are the President's Special Security Unit. They are the cream of the Secret Service and have previously served as members of CAT, the Counter Assault Team, which is part of the Presidential Security Force. These guys have seen more action than you'll ever see in a lifetime. Their equipment is based on the Land Warrior System, which has been an Army development project over the last century. You've been with Force 21, so you should know what I'm talking about. It's the latest infantry equipment enhanced with advanced data communication and processing features. The system is designed to treat each infantry soldier as a single terminal in a network. The helmet has a mounted display that provides everything from sensor and map updates to directives and commands from a command outpost. Through a data link, the soldier is also provided with video and graphic information such as current location, including the placement of friendly units and rendezvous points. Also included with the package are various targeting systems, biosensors, GPS receiving units, and the latest data processing equipment. If I remember right, didn't the Army have a problem finding a battery with enough longevity to power the equipment? That's right. But the development of a sealed membrane battery capable of withstanding the wear and tear of combat situations solved that problem, making the system practical. On top of that, the weight of all this equipment is no longer a problem, thanks to the DARPA-developed exoskeleton technology with human strength amplification capabilities. A soldier may look slow and clumsy in all this equipment, but don't let that fool you. The Harrier II is equipped with AMRAAM mid-range air-to-air missiles. The AMRAM is an active homing missile designed to succeed the Sparrow. On the final phase of its guided approach to a target, the missile locks onto the objective with an active seeker and goes into full autonomous flight mode. In short, the AMRAM is a missile with fire and forget capability. This aspect of the missile makes it ideal for fire and run tactics, significantly improving the mission survival rate of the firing aircraft. With a high-performance active seeker, the AMRAM is extremely functional. Once fired, it pretty much zeroes in on its target with deadly accuracy. And how do you avoid one of these? I recommend chaff grenades. The AMRAM's been reinforced against ECMs. In fact, the missile's been designed to home in on the source of electronic countermeasures. But that only applies to air combat. It's highly unlikely that the missile's equipped for tracking human targets with any precision. What's the matter, Raiden? Snake, where are you? Oh, that's right. You can't see me because of my stealth camouflage. Stealth camouflage? Otacon brought it for me. <sighs> Why didn't you tell me about it? Well... Let me guess. I didn't ask, right? You're learning, kid. Now remember, you may not be able to see me, but I'm around, watching your back. I'll explain how to use the camera. 
That digital camera you have was specially made to take pictures of the prototype Metal Gear. When a picture is taken, the screen data is first stored in the camera's internal memory. Then it's automatically processed through various algorithms to protect against tampering. Each picture is electronically stamped and distinctively encrypted. So in the off chance that someone alters the data during transmission, we'll know immediately. Oh, there's a limit to the internal memory's capacity. If the memory becomes full, overwrite the pictures you don't need anymore. I'm sorry, Jack, but there isn't enough free space on the memory card PS2. I couldn't save the data. Jack, how far do you think the Patriot's digital control extends? I don't really know, but it probably influences a lot of what goes on in our everyday lives. Even mundane things like which movies and songs become a hit and what kind of clothes we wear? I think taste would be the easiest thing to manipulate. I mean, think about the kinds of film and bands everyone wants to go to see. It's whatever's at the top of the charts. And if the charts are made up... Exactly. But you can't really control individual taste. It's too closely tied to personality. I don't know about that. Trends have always been about following the leader. Not necessarily. The age of direct personal interaction is over. So is the idea of word-of-mouth communication. Rose, you have any friends you've met online? Huh? Mm, yeah, I do. How many? Well, if you count only the ones I talk to a lot, I'd say about 20. How many of those have you actually met? <laughs> One or two tops. Uh-huh. That's how it is for everyone, I guess. And even if your online buddies had fake identities and were circulating false information, you'd have no way of knowing. Fake identities? Right. And there'd be no way for you to know for sure. Well, what about people who do meet face-to-face -face, then? Like us. Us? Have you ever really shown me the real you? I wouldn't even know the real me myself. But you're being honest with yourself now. Well, that's how I see it. Well, how am I being honest? I've never seen you show so much feeling. Fear, anger, even a kind of giddiness. It may seem a strange thing to say, but you're living out loud for the first time that I've seen. I'm just trying to get the job done. This is war, you know. I do know that. I'm just saying you're different from your usual restrained self. What about you, then? I always want to be open with you as much as I can. Don't think things like that, Jack. I'm a born and bred killer. Nothing like Snake. He fights for something he believes in. So do you. You're doing your duty. No, I'm not. Somewhere deep inside, I'm enjoying this. This game. By the way, Jack, are you smoking? Yep. I thought you quit smoking. Why did you start again? <sighs> There are lots of reasons. Look, I'm only thinking about your health, okay? Remember the last time you quit, how hard it was? Yeah, it was pretty tough. Wasn't it? So you should j I've got it, Rose. I've thought of a way to avoid all that pain and suffering. What are you gonna do? Keep smoking. Jack! Just kidding. I know it's bad for me. I'll quit as soon as I get back. Oh. Rose, no comment? About? I've killed someone. Jack, it's a battlefield. My opponents are living, breathing human beings. This isn't like the VR training. They have bodies. They have had lives. I took all that away from them. But you've got no choice if you want to survive. And yet, maybe because of the VR training, I can't help but try and block out that reality. It's the only way I can manage to fight. Jack. What? I don't care what it takes, just as long as you come back alive. Do whatever it takes, please. Just come back in one piece. Okay. Right. Save complete. Goodbye. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Nothing. What are you talking about? What am I? Aren't you being a little cold? <laughs> really? Aren't you just imagining things? Maybe I'm just not as warm as that hand you've been holding for quite some time now. Rose, you know this isn't... I know. I'm just teasing you. But I was thinking, I was wondering, whether you would be as protective if it were me instead of Emma. Of course I would. Think so? Oh, that's right. You're such a kind person. Rose. Forget about it. Good luck. Why are you so interested in me all of a sudden? Because I'm curious. More so than before, does it really bother you that much? There must be some things you don't want to say. Like what? You know, 
Those things you don't want to say. Let's see. Things you don't want to say. Like that you've been married before, that you're 80 years old, that you used to be a woman. Rose. What exactly is it you won't tell me? Do you think I'd hate you if I knew? Do you really have that little faith in me? No, it's nothing like that. Then what is it? It's... <sighs> it really bothers me. The fact that there's a side of you I don't know. Sometimes I just can't help myself. You've got me right now. Isn't that enough? No, it's not. I'm sorry. I know I'm being greedy, but it's just not enough. <sighs> Colonel, there's a gym suit. Hmm. Looks like a high barometric pressure diving suit. By maintaining barometric pressure within the suit, it should allow its wearer to carry out work at sea depths of as much as 300 meters. But it doesn't look even remotely usable. It's a very old model. Yeah, and it's rusted all over. It doesn't even look like it's been used. Olga Gerlukovich. She's the daughter of former GRU Colonel Sergei Gerlukovich. After the Federation collapsed, the Colonel apparently commanded a group of mercenaries that drifted between area conflicts and civil wars. After he died, it looks like she took over control of the group. She has more notches on her gun than you do. Underestimating her prowess will get you hurt. Be careful. What's that bird? Parrot, isn't it? Probably a large budgie. Parakeets get used to humans easily and are talkative, so they are real playful and fun. Hurts when they bite, though, and keeping their cage clean is quite a task. Having one isn't all fun and games. You sure know a lot about parakeets. I had my own once. I didn't know that. I never mentioned it? No. This is the first time. Really? Yeah. There's probably a lot of other things that I don't know about you yet. Yeah, actually, well, there's a lot more. Rose? Jack? What? After this mission is over, let's talk about lots of things. Yeah, let's. Good luck. Raiden. Temperatures in that area appear to be real low. Yeah, just like a refrigerator. Maybe to keep GW frozen. High temperatures are forbidden for fiber optic neuro AI processors. Don't catch a cold. Raiden, I trust that you don't actually believe what that guy Pliskin told you, right? I believe him. There's something about him, like, like an iron will. Enough to trust. Raiden. Hmm. He's not included in the simulation. Don't trust him, ever. You got it? Roger that. Colonel, do you think the terrorist ringleader is really Solid Snake? Yes, I do. But during the Shadow Moses incident, Snake was a... A hero? Yeah. Certainly. You went through VR training. But it is not as if the simulation is faithful to every fact. It changes people. You too, Colonel? Raiden, focus on the task at hand. Solid Snake is the terrorist kingpin. He is an opponent you can't underestimate. Understood? That tanker accident that happened over there two years ago. The tanker sank and... I know. I went through it in VR training. The tanker didn't sink because of Snake, though. Raiden, VR training does not exactly simulate everything with absolute fidelity. What do you mean? Okay, listen. Here are the facts. Known terrorist Solid Snake sank that tanker loaded with crude oil. The end result being severe environmental pollution in Manhattan Bay. Put any misperceptions of Snake as some kind of hero behind you. He is a terrorist, and that's that. Colonel, do the terrorists have a Harrier? Yes, an AV-8B Harrier II designed for the Marines. It is a V-Stall attack aircraft outfitted with a 25mm gun, air-to-air -air missiles, and anti-ground rockets. It's not something you want to try to take on in a SEAL helicopter. Yeah. Even more so if unprotected. Colonel, where do they get such a weapon? I don't know. Are they really just run-of-the-mill terrorists? Relax, Raiden. Right now, just think about your mission at hand. Do you understand? Jack, here's the data I found on Fortune. She goes by Fortune. She leads Dead Cell. Her real name is Helena Dolph Jackson. Two years ago, her father, Commandant of the Marine Corps Scott Dolph, was killed in a training accident. Her husband was the former dead cell leader, Colonel Jackson. Died in captivity, my data says. After her husband's death, she joined the military. She didn't have any combat experience, but was soon singled out for a particular trait and was reassigned to dead cell. What trait? Luck. She was real lucky. Like, miraculously lucky. Wherever she went, bullets curved away. And missions always ended in success. Is that some kind of joke? I thought so, too. 
but there is not a single record of her ever being wounded, not even a scratch. Jack, be careful, please. Fat Man carries a Glock 18, a fully automatic version of the Glock 17 pistol. It can fire 29 millimeter bullets per second. Getting caught in its line of fire is extremely dangerous. Weren't machine pistols originally used for VIP security assignments, though, in order to stop terrorists? Correct. As portable weapons with major firepower. That he would have such a gun and use it with only one hand. Don't forget, he's a member of Dead Cell. Hmm. What's more, he walks around wearing that suit. He must have a lot of faith in his own strength. Don't engage him in a firefight from the front. Attack him when he reloads. Colonel, Pliskin was Snake after all. According to him. What? Listen, Raiden, I'll say it again. He is not in the simulation. There you go about the simulation again. Don't put your faith in him. Don't trust him. Do you understand? Why? The signal will be scrambled. There's electronic interference surrounding the big shell. Done by the terrorists? Perhaps. Probably to prevent any UAV or other searches by us. But they use radios and ciphers too, right? Of course. They wouldn't set it up to interfere with the several channels that they are using. The only thing affected is your remote-controlled missile. Fortunately, the interference isn't too strong. While inside the big shell, you should have no problem using a remote-controlled missile. Colonel, the outer heaven that Snake mentioned? Ah, yes. It is a despotic military state, built by a guy called Big Boss, the greatest soldier in history, and Snake's father, genetically speaking. He tried to restart it? I don't know, but word has it that his brother Liquid Snake hoped for an outer heaven also. It might have had some special significance for the two brothers. Colonel, why did Ocelot murder the president? They disagreed, probably. Exactly the same. What? As the Shadow Moses incident. Don't be foolish. Are you sure about that? Ames' death, appearance of the ninja, the president's death, and now the virus. You're reading too much into things. That's right, Jack. You're tired. Oh. Raiden, don't waste your time thinking unnecessary thoughts. Invest all your energy instead in carrying out your duties. Colonel, did you hear the truth about the Shadow Moses incident? Yeah. Snake wasn't a terrorist. He looked thrilled. Huh? Yeah. So you just believe everything that he told you then? What did you say? Don't trust him. He isn't in the simulation. Simulation again? What exactly are you talking about? Don't put your trust in him. Just carry out your duties to the best of your abilities. Do you understand, Raiden? Raiden, that skull suit of yours is designed to minimize drag when you're underwater. Try feeling the suit's skin. Sort of sandpapery. What you're feeling is a series of microscopic grooves. This water-repelling scale structure cancels out the force of the currents. The suit cuts drag by a full 10%. You'll be swimming like a fish. The technology is extrapolated from the structure of shark skin. The concavity of the skin surface is designed to cut down on air drag on dry land as well. Same idea as the surface of golf balls, but improved upon. Sounds good. I think I'm ready for the Olympics. Raiden, you have to beat Solidus. This is your last duty. We're not just pawns in some simulation game, you know. Yes, you are. You're nothing but mere weapons. No different from fighter jets or tanks. What the? The old model destroyed four years ago was Rex. The new amphibious model is Ray. Both of these are the same as the code names used by the U.S. Armed Forces to refer to Japanese warplanes during World War II. Your code name, Raiden, too, comes from the Japanese Navy's name for one of its interceptors. Stop it! I'm not a weapon! Oh, really? Do you know the code name the U.S. Armed Forces used for the Japanese fighter Raiden? It was Jack. Both of you are just weapons to be used and thrown away. Just weapons to be used on the battlefield. Just pawns in a game, exactly as you said. And a weapon has no right to think for itself. Now, it's time to fulfill your purpose. Defeat Solidus. Colonel, what's this door? I don't know. It's huge. What the hell is it? It's not in our intel. Hmm, there's a desk that stands out. It's awfully customized. What kind of dork brings all this stuff to work? Must be a super freak. Jack, I looked into Mr. X. I mean, Deep Throat. During the Shadow Moses incident, Solid Snake did receive help from a guy who called himself Deep Throat. 
His true identity appears to be that of former Foxhound unit member Gray Fox. Gray Fox, huh? Correct. His real name is Frank Yeager, the only member of Foxhound allowed to use the title of Fox. He was its best member. In Outer Heaven, he holed up in the stronghold ahead of Snake. He helped him and brought an end to the standoff. But in Zanzibar, he joined forces with Big Boss and became the leader of the upheaval. That's where he fought and lost to Snake. Fox was mortally injured and was picked up by the military. After that, it looks like he was used as the guinea pig in power exoskeleton and gene therapy experiments. Power exoskeleton? Cyborg ninjas, as some people called them. Detailed records were lost in the research center fire, though. After that, he ended up in Shadow Moses? Yes, but why he showed up there is not in the records. Some people believe that it was to get revenge against Snake, but there is nothing definite to go by. So now he's... No, he died in Shadow Moses. That is for sure. So then who is Mr. X? I don't know, but be careful. Jack, tell me, am I really helping you out? Yeah, you're a huge help. I'm lucky to have you as an analyst. Hmm. But didn't you tell me just a little while ago that I should change my job or quit or something? Yeah, you were pretty pissed off. Why did you say those things? Well, you have to work overtime and stuff. It sounded pretty tough. But you didn't mean it, did you? I was wrong about a lot of things then. I just thought that if we had more time to spend together that... You were thinking of your own danger. Uh, well... Don't you think it's selfish to expect everyone to be at your beck and call? I'm not your personal possession, you know. That's not how I think of you. Is that so? Yeah. Listen, I like you, and I like the me that likes you. But I do not like being summed up as Jack's girlfriend. The very thought of it makes me shiver. There's a lot more to me than just being your girlfriend. The fact that I'm doing the job I want to do is part of that, understand? Yeah, of course, I... I want to be recognized, first of all, for who I really am. Especially by you. I don't want you, of all people, thinking that I'm just your girlfriend. Th that's not what I think at all. Can you really say that? Absolutely. Really? I'm glad. You're right. I see it now. You may not have field experience, but you've been trained in the hyper-reality of simulated combat. Don't give in to fear. Just do as you were trained and everything will be all right. How do you know? Use your head. They can't see those Claymore mines either, even if they did the planting. So they need to keep a mine detector handy. I wouldn't have thought of that. You're right. I don't think they taught you this in all that VR training, but intuition counts for something in battle. Use your wits and senses to detect the danger. Got it? Wasn't there a design on the cardboard box that the seagulls might be afraid of? You're currently using artificial blood primed with nanomachines. What did you do with my own blood? It's being kept in cold storage. It will be circulated back into your body when you return. The rumors about Big Shell being a big cover-up are all true. Otacon? I had Snake check everything out. Sure, there's some facilities to clean up the pollution, but they're not running at full capacity. Don't you think it's funny that even though two years have gone by since the incident, they haven't managed to clean up all the crude oil? Of course, the media doesn't report that kind of thing. I think they're having fresh shipments of crude oil brought in to replace the stuff they've cleaned up. The story you were told about toxic chemicals being released if the plant were blown up also seems pretty fishy. I don't think it's actually true. Information is being suppressed on a huge scale. These guys seem to think that the new Metal Gear is worth all the effort and money they're spending on it. So I've been lied to all along. No, I think even your CO didn't know what was going on. And that's probably what he's been telling you. I didn't mean by the Colonel. I meant by you. Huh? We never lied to you. We just didn't tell you everything, that's all. <sighs> you know, you're a pretty interesting guy. You're just like Snake said. What did he say? That you're a weak, simple-minded, stubborn fool. A, a weak, simple-minded... Ah, oh, don't worry. He didn't mean anything bad by it. Nothing bad? Well, what could possibly be worse than that? That lying, useless, backstabbing, mincing son of a... Ryden, I'm his friend. I know him better than anyone else. I know he's not that kind of guy. Yeah, so what? And, uh, by the way, there's one more thing you should probably know about Snake. What? He's right here. Next to you? Yep. Did he hear...
Every word. I'm... I'm just gonna get back to the mission now. And this is what they plan to do right over Manhattan. The New York Stock Exchange. Will suffer the same fate. If one of the key movers of world economy stops functioning, it could mean the beginning of a global depression. Black Monday will look like a picnic in comparison. At long last, it seems that she will go through the immigration process. Will Lady Liberty finally get her green card?